Hi everyone, welcome to Natural Wonders. Today I'm going to do a wonderful woodland scene for you all. It's going to have some little waterfall in the background and it's going to have some stones showing underneath the water. So come along with us and we'll have a cracking time on this. I'm just going to run the colours across the screen for you all that you're going to need to paint along with us. So I'll see you soon. Hey everyone, let's get started on this one. So first things first, I'm just going to grab some, these are acrylics that I'm using. And I'm just going to grab some of the brown, both sides, and pull a tiniest bit of black into that brown so that it's dark, nice dark colour. See that? Just a nice dark brown in there. And then with that, I'm just going to highlight one side with white, just one side of the brush. So you've got one side dark and the other side light. So just up in here, I'm just going to start at the top, very slim, and work my way down. So that's one little trunk that I'm putting in there. Now, what I might do first of all, is grab a load more of that white. And I'm going to mix both sides first into that now. Because I've decided I want to put a few more that are a bit more distant. So just over in here, i just come down got some water here just to thin the paints when you need them to be thinned down there. so these are a bit lighter just in the background and there we've got one coming somewhere around there some of them will be twin trunk style trees as well so we'll just come down and that will join to this one. Uh, a lot of this is going to be only seen in the background. So these are the lighter ones first that I'm doing. I've some of them actually as they're a bit gnarly and bent over. Try and make it look natural. So they're not all just bean poles. Uh, that's it. And again you can use a small part and put some branches in there. Just a good light, light brown for this. Maybe do a few fast ones. I only want them thin you see. And I find if you do it faster, you get them slightly thinner. Just a few there in the background. Change the angles all the time, what you're doing. Same over there, but you'll hardly see any of that when we're finished. Now again, because we've got a lot of light on this brush now, I'm just going to go back to the dark. The dark brown and black. On one side of the brush only. And then you pull that other side through the light again. So we're back to doing the dark and the light again. Get my black into that. And then keep wetting your brush for this. It will help you. If you keep it wet with acrylics, it will blend better. So maybe we've got another big one. A bit closer to us. So the lights on this side shining to the, to the right. It's going to come through basically. We're going to have a lot of really nice sunlight bursting through these trees good and dark and on the edges they'll get slightly darker as well I'll put some branches up into these very soon So 
use some of the ones that you've already put on there and they can be twin trunk style trees like I was suggesting before they can work really well now I know that I'm going to have a big a big big one there, wide quite a wide trunk Buff that in and then I'll highlight it afterwards. There. Love it. And you can decide which ones you want to be bigger, which ones you want to be smaller. These are quite big, what I'm doing here. And maybe this one as well can come in front of that. Just put a bit of highlight on that as well on one side. They have to be predominantly darker than these ones that you put behind. That way you'll get the desired effect. A highlight on that side of it. That's what I want in. And then you can always just go back into your dark again if it's too light on one side then not dark enough on the other. A bit more of that dark colour and bring it in down there. Cool. A bit persistent with these. Now I'm going to put a big one on this side. I'm going to make it this one, so the light is to the left of this tree. I just exaggerate that way so you can see it more. To the left, same on that one. You go back all over it and just put a highlight on that left hand side of it. The light is all coming from in here, blistering outwards. This one I want to be a fat tree. It's going to have a lot more on it. I can go behind there. You see where it's doing that? And it's leaving them rough edges. That's because it's not enough water with the paint. So I just put a bit more water with that. And you see how better that flows now? It'll flow beautifully for you then. Block that in inside. Quite a fat looking tree that one. I like to have a bit of like ribs and stuff in these trees so you can pick up a bit of that light and just go back in you see and make it look like a little bit of ribbed bark just in there on that big fat one, that big fat tree. Actually I want to just neaten the back edge of this up a bit, just go back in again, that's cool. Very soon I'm going to come back with my liner brush and do some sticks and twigs in all of this. Front one in there. That's in total dark, that one. No highlight on it. Cool. Now I know that in here I'm going to have a load more trees and stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use some black gesso this time. Just black gesso. indicate just with the brush with the fan brush some bushes just up in there put them trees off completely so they're not even there and where the waterfall is going to be I actually want it to be lower than the rest of this it's going to sit down here somewhere so you can put some bushes in first, just in there. I know that it's quite high up, so I can really bring them bushes right up to that. And just here with the acrylics, I'll go back over this and put some green highlights on, 
different shades of green and stuff like that. You can use a bit of it now in here, just a little bit of sap green in with that black. And then I'll, I'll mix the colours. You can see I've got the Indian yellow, cadmium yellow. I've got quite a few different yellows going on. And I want it to be higher on the edges where the bushes are higher. Tap gentle and it'll give you a good edge for your bush. See that? Just really gentle. But make sure as well that you've run out of a bit of paint. Because that seems to help a lot as well. If you've run out of the paint, it'll work better for the tops. See that? So let it run out. And then you go back in once it's run out and you can just tap in there. Waterfall's going to be coming from somewhere like there, so we're going to have some rocks and stuff in there. Rocks and boulders. Now, just up to the top of here, I'm just going to use this fan brush. I'm going to use some cadmium yellow, bit of the green, all into that black. Uh, this is one shade of the green which I'm going to use first of all. So we put that in, come in and highlight a few of these bushes just with the fan brush though this just the fan brush it's all you need and I'm going over the dark colour that I've just put on there so it will become a lot darker than it is right now when it's a lot brighter than it will be because the acrylics soak into the dark and they go a bit duller I'll highlight the edge of that I'll change the twang of it just by using a different yellow See that in there? Just use that different yellow. Use yellow ochre, Indian yellow, whatever. Just get some variety of colour in there. That's it. But just don't kill all your darks. Leave your shadows in there at the base. Put some stuff in there. That's nice. Just leave some of them in just, sha just dark shadows sometimes. The ones on the edges, they can be quite bright. See how I'm just going in here with the yellow? Just on the edge, where the sun's going to be coming through there. I want to use just a bit of that yellow. And you can actually separate these bushes now by just going in with the cadmium yellow and just brighten up the top edge of the bush where the sunlight is going to hit that. That's it. Sometimes you can... Add a bit of white to the yellow ochre colour, or the Indian yellow. And then that will give you a nice highlight to put a few little different things going on in there. Yeah, they dropped it that time. Some indications. Keep them shadows. Do not kill your shadows. Right, again, that same colour. I really like in that some of that are in here yeah, so that brush is more of a orca tone to it be gentle and leave them darks underneath and some of that other green will still actually mix into this but that's what we want we don't want it one flat green all the way through, we want to keep twisting that and changing it about. Uh, let's just put a bit of colour on them for us. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my dark colours again, which is dark black, mixed with the greens. And then just up in here, I'm going to come up and I'm going to tap, tap some indications of leaves that you can see behind there. Just some leaves. That's perfect. And I'm going to have the sunlight blistering through that area. Put some leaves just in there, I think, as well. So you'll start to get depth already now with the ones that are further away. And we're going to put colour into this sky, but only with oils. This is a demonstration on how to use oils and uh, acrylics underneath oils. 
over painting with oils is a wonderful fun way to do it as you can see it's really simple it's an easy way of doing it maybe a few little leaves up in there you can do the background ones sometimes but softer see that there's only more distance you just don't tap as hard don't use as much pressure and that'll work for you tap in there a bit so in the background same up in here I think I've had some distant leaves you can see in the background now again when you want it darker go back into your dark colour again have some leaves in there that are quite dark at the top keep tapping reloading your brush but keep your brush open my bristles are open on this fan brush you can see that's why I'm getting the effect that I'm getting only because it's open the minute you close them brushes up it won't work so you get that by tapping into the paint there. I'll leave a little area there where there's not as much I'm going to go over to this side there. put some in over here step back and have a look at what you've been doing and again and just gently just see if I've yeah just in here put some soft ones that aren't as dark just on this and even on these just don't tap as heavily tap a lot softer that gives these trees some leaves as well a bit of sap flavour away and I'll put some branches on very soon dark up in there once you've got a bit of green on there you can hit the dark black and just go into that now I want quite a bit of summit over there big branch coming out to hold all that lot up and then the same up in here I want it quite dark some branches that are coming over and through there. same up in here I'll probably tap gently make it look like there's a few distant ones going on You've just got plenty of things going on there, just in the background. There we go. So, same up in here. Just only when you've run out of paint can you do these back distant ones. Let your brush just run out of that paint. It's a bit stronger underneath. There's some there just above that bush. Yeah. Now I'm just going to go back to my greens, straight into the dark colour again with the different greens. I'm going to use the yellow, cadmium yellow, Indian yellow. Okay. Come back and you just gently highlight some of them I can re-highlight these when I go back over it again with the oils so it doesn't matter too much but I know where the sunlight's going to be coming through so what I'll do is I'll just brighten up certain parts and certain areas where I think it's going to be brighter and where the sunshine's going to be hitting the leaves even in there I can go back in and just tap some nice little bits in. Nice. Again, some bright colours, and they'll work just on there. Some of the brighter green. Don't fill them all, leave some of them just dark. And then highlight the ones that'll make it look brighter actually by leaving the dark because it's only these here in the light that are getting hit by it so they're the only ones you want to really light up some of these you can get away with just putting very minimal green or leaf color on there same with these at the back but then you can mix that up back into the opposite yellow again 
the Indian yellow. So I've got a, a good mixture of different greens. And just tap some of that here and there. There, a bit in there. Nice. I'm really enjoying doing this. A lot of fun. I do love woodland scenes. We used to sit out in woods having little campfires and all that kind of stuff. I've always really enjoyed all that. A bit of rain me is in me. <sighs> right, so I'm just going to use some straight back gesso now. Just straight back gesso on the fan brush. And then underneath here, basically, I can just paint all this in black. Just want it basically really black underneath there because we're going to have uh, an area where there's some rocks where this waterfall comes over That's it. tap underneath that so it just looks like there's not a there we go tap into that slightly it's wonderful to do though is this underpainting with acrylics first and then going back in with the oils, it's, it's a wonderful way of painting. Just still blocking in this dark, basically, under here. Now, I've got it all masked off, because I've got a canvas frame underneath, so... a bit of black gesso when you're doing this, quite a lot. That's it. Lock it right in. We're going to have our waterfall coming from over here. And it's going to be dropping quite a bit, and then a little stream coming from it. Something about like so. Now, looking at this, and I want it to be a little bit higher, I think. So, if I can again use the dark in with the greens. And then just in here, we put some brushes a bit higher. Just here and there. that in down there yeah I'm gonna totally block it in we're gonna have a lot of rocks in this a lot of bushes as well I think I'll have this bush when it's coming now be coming from there right through like so see that right in front of these leave it dark in the shadows and you can just tap behind it then Nice. Put the yellow off it again. And then you can, like this bush here, with that yellow off, you can tap a bit of that in and bring that on through. There. So then I'm going to have some rocks and some boulders just here at each side of this waterfall. Uh, go back to my normal green highlight a few of them that I just put in there. Maybe 
No, not that. Just there. Open them bristles. That didn't work properly because it wasn't open enough. You can just gently tap around that. Just one that's lit up a tiny bit more. Brilliant. Right, so I'm just going to get a lot of water, mix it with brown and a bit of black. Just in there. Good dark colour basically, but extremely thin. Thin the paint down completely. Just thin it down. That might not even be thin enough. Let's try it. Get a lot more water into that. So I really want it to flow well for me this. Now some of them will be pretty much dark. But then others will be lighter. So I'm going to get a bit of white into that. Just a tiny bit of white. So it's, it's like so. More water. You can use flow enhancer for this if you like, but water is just the cheaper alternative. And then just up in here, so to hold up some of these branches, some of these leaves, just put in some little indications of little sticks and twigs just going on in there. Then with that, to bring one up there. Put quite a few going on. Just up at the top area, that'll be fine. See? Give them a few little crooks and stuff, you know. These trees have been through the wars. Probably been stood on and stuff like that. Kids climbing them. So they do have a lot of character to them. I used to love climbing trees when I was a kid. I was terrible for it. Always in hospital. When you start running out of water in it, you'll notice because it stops flowing for you. That's it. 